Okay, so similar to uh, what we had with common emitters that um, after discussing this normal common emitter amplifier, we talked about common emitter with emitter degeneration. Um, now we have to talk about common source stage with degeneration. We have seen common source with the resistor load, with the current source load, with the um, basically the load that we saw um, in the previous slide. Now let's talk about the common source amplifier that has an emitter, a source degeneration resistor RS, right? Up to now, our source was connected to ground. Now let's see what happens if I connect my source to um, and to ground, but to an RS, not directly to ground. So here's the small signal model. So I'm going to start with the VN, as always. And uh, I'm going to have the gap, VGS. And this time, source is not connected to ground. It's actually connected to an RS, and that RS is actually connected to ground. On the drain side, uh, things are pretty much the same. So I have GM, VGS, and I have the R0. Um, for now, let's just assume that lambda is equal to zero. So no channel length modulation, so let's just ignore R0. And let's just have the RD to ground. Okay. V out. Great. So how do I find uh, the gain? Well, V out is actually... So let's write it. V out is negative GM rd times vgs the difference is that this time vgs is not our vn vn is from this point to ground but vgs is from this point to this point which is not ground so they're not equal to each other therefore i have to first find out what is the relationship between vgs and vn right so to do that well um i know that basically let's call this node vx i know that KVL going from here all the way to here to ground tells me that VN minus VGS minus VX is going to be equal to zero, right? And I want the relationship between VN and VGS, so I have to somehow uh, rewrite VX based on these two or some known parameters. So let's continue this. VN minus VGS is equal to VX, which is, well, basically rs times its current and the current of rs is basically there's no current coming from here um, there is only gm vgs coming from there so it's going to be rs times gm vgs great now i have everything based on known parameters such as gm and rs or vgs and v in which i want to find their relationship with each other so i can continue this and say that VGS is going to be equal to VN over 1 plus GM RS. Okay, so I just massage this, this expression and I got to this one. <clears throat> now that I know the relationship, I can say that V out is equal to negative GM RD times. 1 over 1 plus gm rs times vn, right? Or I can say that v out over vn is equal to negative gm over 1, of 1 plus gm rs times rd. Okay, so that's the gain. Um, you can see that the gain compared to a normal common source. So like if you remember for a simple common source stage, gain was equal to negative GM RD. So you can see that, well, we have negative GM RD in the numerator of this fraction, but in the denominator, I have one plus GM RS. So the gain is actually attenuated. But in many textbooks, people define 
this entire thing as a capital GM just to make sure just to make this oh actually they don't include the negative so to be more precise this is what they define as capital GM so that the form is actually very similar to a normal common source so they call this a negative GMRT that's just the definition doesn't change anything um, we based on this we can see that the gain is actually attenuated by a factor of 1 plus GMRS and that's what we actually expected because um, with common emitter with degeneration we saw that it actually attenuates the gain but it has other benefits we have the same kind of stability benefits that we had over there um, here as well okay now if I want to take it to the form that we are more familiar with from the BJT analysis we can see that this is if I divide the numerator and denominator of this fraction by GM I'm going to get negative RD divided by 1 over GM plus RS right so the resistor in the drain so now I have RD only in the drain but if I had so many other resistors or like replacing the resistor with a common with the, with the current source basically it tells you that whatever resistance that you see in the drain so it could be just the rd or could be a bunch of resistors in parallel could be a transistor and then you replace the equivalent resistor resistance of that transistor but at the end of the day whatever resistance that you see on the in the drain divided by one over gm plus whatever resistance that you see in the source okay so that's the uh, that's it gain of uh a common source stage with degeneration now in the beginning i said that the lambda we're going to assume it's equal to zero if we assume it's not zero we're going to have so i'm going to have this r naught and this is if lambda is not equal to zero right but if i have if i have that the process is going to be very similar but the gain is not going to be as um, clean and simple the gain expression so for this course for a common source stage with degeneration we're just going to assume that all the time um, if we want to calculate the gain there is no channel length modulation lambda is equal to zero so we don't have this r naught just to keep things simple there's nothing new you just still have to do the same kind of process you just have to write the kcl it's just going to be a little bit more complicated you have to write two KCLs to actually relate the V out and V in together. But in terms of the way or the way that you approach the problem, it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, so we learned that uh, the gain of a common source stage with source degeneration is equal to um, negative GM over one plus GM RS times RD or negative G capital GM RT. Okay, so now let's solve an example. We're going to solve this example in two ways. One is we're just going to ignore the fact that we know this expression. We're just going to calculate the gain again directly from the small signal uh, circuit. Uh, that's kind of like the, um, the hard way of doing things. And then um, we're going to repeat the, the, our, our process using the smart way of doing things, using the fact that we know that uh, this is a common source stage with degeneration and m2 i if i if i replace the entire m2 here with the resistor i have the exact same circuit as the previous slide so i can easily uh, apply the same gain expression okay so first let's do it the hard way um, let's say that well the first thing i want to do is to actually draw the small signal model so i'm going to start with this v signal connected to the gate source gap vgs the drain is connected to the source using a GM VGS current source and then the drain is connected to an RD to ground again as I said for common source stages with degeneration we're going to just assume that uh, channel length modulation is not there so lambda is zero now the source of this M1 so we have to actually use VGS1 GM1 VGS1 so that we can distinguish between the two transistors the source of m1 is actually connected to the source of m2 so let's say this is the source of m2 therefore the gate of m2 would be the vgs of m2 is going to be vgs2 this is going to be the gate gate is connected to ground so i'm just going to connect it to ground 
and the drain is also connected to ground but then between the gate and source I'm gonna have this current source flowing from drain to source which is GM2 VGS2 so the direction is always from drain to source and then um, the drain is also connected to ground so if I want to annotate this this is gate this is drain this is source of one this is also source of transistor 2 this is gate of transistor 2 and drain of transistor 2 okay now how do I solve this well our friend KCL is gonna help and well the other friend KVL are, is gonna also help first thing I'm gonna write a KCL at this node S1 which is also the node S2 right you don't remember from EEC S2 and 200 that these S1 and S2 are the same node right so if I want to write the KCL, I can see that I only have two currents, this one and this one, because these two are just basically the, the, the branches on the left are, well, they're open, so they don't have any current. So I can write GM1, VGS1, uh, plus GM2, VGS2, should be equal to zero. That tells me that VGS2 is equal to negative GM1 or GM2, times VGS1. Good. Now I'm gonna write <clears throat> I'm gonna write KVL here and uh, my KVL I'm gonna write it on this path. Okay so uh, plus V signal minus VGS1 because we're going from plus to minus plus VGS2 because I'm going from the negative to positive is going to be equal to I'm arriving at the ground so equal to zero this tells me that V signal is going to be equal to VGS1 minus VGS2 great now if I want to calculate the gain the first thing I need to know is that what is the output so this is the output right because the output is defined at, at the drain of M1 and drain of one is here, so this is my V out, right? So my V out, if I if I define my V out as that, I can say that V out is equal to negative GM1 VGS1 times RD. So GM1 is given from the DC analysis, RD is given. Um, this time again, I know that my VGS1 is not really my V signal, so I have to find the relationship between VGS1 and V signal. And that's why I've been doing all of these KCLs and KVLs. Okay. Now, how do I find the relationship between uh, VGS1 and uh, V signal? Well, I have two equations, two unknown. One is here, and two is here. So I know the relationship between from one. I know the relationship between VGS1 and VGS2, and from two, I know the relationship between the two of them and V signal. Right. So from two and one, one and two. They tell me that V signal, oops, V signal is equal to VGS1 times 1 minus, so basically VGS1 minus VGS2, and I'm going to replace VGS2 with this uh, expression from equation number 1. So it's going to be 1 and then minus that, so I'm going to get a plus GM1 over GM2 times VGS1. Great. So I have a, I have found the relationship between the two. So I can actually get let's call this three and let's call this four. Three and four. They tell me that uh, V out is going to be negative GM one times R D, and then instead of V G S one. Uh, by the way, this is V G S one. So instead of VGS1, I'm going to put, well, this is going to be GM2 plus GM1 over GM2 and take it to the other side. I'm going to get um, GM2 over GM1 plus GM2 times V sigma. Okay. Looking at this, I can say that my gain, which is V out over V signal or V in. Um, is going to be equal to negative GM1 GM2 over GM1 plus GM2 
times RT. Now I know that uh, that's that's our gain expression. We're done. I know that it looks like that GM1 and GM2, the, the, the relationship, the fraction looks like that they're in parallel. That doesn't mean really anything. So then they just we just was we were just lucky that we got an expression that looks like a parallel thing. So don't try to read too much into this uh, fraction or expression. Now this was the hard way of doing things. Now let's look at the easy way of doing things. So or the smart way of doing things. Uh, let me draw a line here. So solution two. I know that from slide eleven. From our discussion in slide eleven, I know that R seen, or let's not use it as a subscript, R seen from source of an N mass is equal to one over GM of that N mass. Therefore, I can replace this circuit with just VDD resistor RD M1 connected to VN and instead of I can see that looking from from the perspective of M1 if M1 is looking uh, to, to from its source to the to the bottom it sees the resistor of M2. It sees M2 from the source, and I know that that resistor is one over GM2, right? So I can replace that entire thing here with one over GM2. Okay. Now that I have the circuit, I can easily say from the previous slide and from the expression up here. Um, this expression, I can easily say that, okay, so instead of RS, the resistance in the source, I have 1 over GM2. So then let's just um, replace RS with 1 over GM2. My gain is going to be equal to negative GM1 over 1 plus GM1 times 1 over GM2 times RT. Do the common denominator for the uh, in the for the denominator, and then bring it to the numerator. You get negative GM1, GM2 over GM1 plus GM2. Actually, GM2 plus GM1 times RT. So I got the same exact expression in well, with I guess 10% of effort, with just being smart, knowing that. Oh look, this is a common source stage with uh, source stage generation. All I need to know is that how do I replace that thing that is in the source with a simple resistor? Well, this time I knew that basically the resistance seen from a source of a transistor is just one over GM of that transistor. But even if I didn't know, it would have been much easier to actually find out what is that resistance. Just connect the test source voltage and uh, find the relationship between Vx and Ix, and you're good to go, right? You replace that resistance, that, that circuit, whatever it is, in this case it was just a single PMOS transistor M2, you're going to replace that with the resistor, and then that resistor is going to act like your RS in the common source with source degeneration, and then you can easily find the gain.